Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on Analyze Data Distributions. Now, if you were to scan this lesson in order to predict two things you will learn about analyzing data distributions, they might be that you can describe a distribution by shape, also that you can describe the center and spread of a distribution. So with our vocabulary startup, recall that in statistical displays, peaks, gaps, clusters, and outliers are identified easily. So we're going to complete the graphic organizer by matching the term with the correct description. As for gap, well, a gap is where there are no data values. A peak is the most frequently occurring value or interval of value. An outlier is a data value that is one and a half times the interquartile range from the first or third quartiles, which then lastly leaves us with a cluster. A cluster is when many data values are grouped together. Now, to describe a distribution by shape, the distribution of a set of data shows the arrangement of data values. It can be described by its center, its spread, which is the same thing as variation, and overall shape. Determining the symmetry of the distribution is one way to describe shape. If the left side of a distribution looks like the right side, then the distribution is symmetric. And here we have two comparing what symmetric and non-symmetric is. So our left side here looks like the right side of the distribution, so this is symmetric, versus the right side here being much taller than the left side, so this is non-symmetric. Another way to describe the shape of a distribution is to identify peaks, clusters, gaps, and outliers. If there is an outlier, the distribution is not symmetric. So as we move to our guided example one, the graph shows the weights of adult cats. Identify any symmetry, clusters, gaps, peaks, or outliers in the distribution. Well, first off, to describe any symmetry, the left side is not the same as the right side. And so this is going to be described as being non-symmetric. There is a cluster from 7 to 12 right here. With the peak, the high point, at 10. There is a gap between 12 and 14 and there are no outliers. So our got it question, identify any symmetry, clusters, gaps, peaks, or outliers in the distribution below. Let's work here with symmetry first. The left side is not the same as the right side, plus we have this outlier over here. So we're going to describe the symmetry as being non-symmetric. Next, any clusters? There appears to be a cluster here from 60 to 63. So we're going to say for clusters, 
60 to 63. What about any gaps? For gaps, it appears that there are two. We have a gap here in the data and a giant gap in the data here. So we're going to say between 58 and 60 for one of the gaps. And then we will also say between 63 and 71 represents our other gap. What about peaks? Well, our high point appears to be right here with 61. So we're going to say a peak at 61. And lastly, we're going to look for outliers. And our outlier is here at 71. So as you look to identify symmetry, clusters, gaps, peaks, or outliers, Make your list and go through the list to solve. Next, we are going to look to describe the center and spread of a distribution. The shape of a distribution tells you which measures are most appropriate for describing the center and spread of a distribution. The mean and mean absolute deviation are affected by outliers while the median and interquartile range are resistant to outliers. So use the following graphic organizer to decide which measures of center and spread are most appropriate to describe a data distribution. We're going to ask ourselves, is the data distribution symmetric? If no, we're going to use the median to describe the center and the interquartile range to describe the spread. If our answer to is the data distribution symmetric is a yes, we're going to use the mean to describe the center and the mean absolute deviation to describe the spread. So as we look at our guided example two, Mr. Watkins class charted the high temperatures in various cities. The results are shown in the line plot. Describe the center and spread of the distribution. Justify your response based on the shape of the distribution. The first question that you need to ask yourself on these, is my distribution symmetric? If no, you're using the median and interquartile range. If yes, you're using the mean and mean absolute deviation. Well, as we look here at this data, it is not symmetric. So you're going to use the median and interquartile ranges. So we find the median, and that's at 84. And to find an interquartile range, you need to find, for an interquartile range, you need to find third quartile and the first quartile and subtract. And so our third quartile here was 95 and 5 tenths, as it says right here. Our first quartile was at 80. And so when you subtract those, you get 15 and 5 tenths. So we can say the data is centered around the median of 84 and the spread of the data around the center is 15 and 5 tenths. So in our last got it question, the graph shows the hours per week that dance students practice their dances. Describe the center and spread of the distribution. Justify your response based on the shape of the distribution. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Well, what is the shape of our distribution? Are we symmetric or not symmetric? Well, here's our center, and the left side looks like the right side. So this is an example where our data 
is symmetric. So we do need to write the distribution is symmetric so the mean and mean absolute deviation are the appropriate measures to use so first we need to find the mean to do so we're going to take the two hours which was just one week of that three hours happened twice four hours happened three times Five hours happened five times. I'm going to continue this down below. Six hours occurred three times. Seven hours occurred twice. And eight hours occurred once. We're going to take that and divide by the total number of weeks, which was one, two, three, four, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 weeks. Well, when we add those up, we'll divide by 17. And the sum is 85. Divided by 17 is 5. So 5 is our mean. Now calculating the mean absolute deviation here is going to be a little bit of work. Uh, so if you need to attach a separate sheet of paper to this or um, write really, really small, that's what you may need to do. We need to find the distance each point is away from the mean. So we need to take 5 minus 2 to get 3. We need to take 5 minus 3, but twice, and we get 2 and 2. We need to take the 4s, so 5 minus 4, but that occurred three times. We're going to get one, one, and one. Then for our fives, that's five minus five, five times. Well, that's just five zeros. Then sixes, those occurred three times, so six minus five, three times, and that gets us one. 7 happened twice, so 7 minus 5 and 7 minus 5, that's 2 and 2. And 8 happened just once, so 8 minus 5 is 3. And so I need to add all these numbers up. I need to add these up. And once we do that, 3 plus 2 is 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20. So the sum of these is 20. And we're still dividing by the original 17 that we had. And 20 divided by 17 produces 1.17 and it continues. And if we're rounding to the nearest tenth as our question suggests, we're going to have an answer of 1 and 2 tenths for our mean absolute deviation. So to finish our summary here, we're going to say the data are centered around the mean of five hours. And then for mean absolute deviation, we can say that the spread of the data around the center is about 
our answer of one and two tenths hours. And that is it for this lesson on analyzed data distributions. Thank you for all your hard work this year. This is our last video. And before we finish, I do want to mention a lot of you guys have been asking me, you know, am I your favorite student? Am I your favorite student? Am I your favorite student? Well, here, finally, I'm going to give you the answer to that question. My favorite student in this class is 